Welcome to Cyberdump number 74, your look at what's happening in this insane age of technology that we live in. As always, all the source links and the transcript of this video are on the Node site. Many things happening recently, so let's have a look. Lots of training simulations this week. The first is Ghost Pacer, which is creators called a holographic workout partner, designed by avid runner Abdurrahman Bhatti. These mixed reality glasses allow you to race and pace against a hologram. Another recently successful Kickstarter was the Catwalk C, a personal treadmill for virtual reality. The device couples with special shoes to allow forward walking and running motion as well as strafing, turning and bending down. Imagine mixing all this with the exoskeleton gloves, haptic feedback suits and temperature mimicking accessories that I've covered in previous episodes. In other news, Flame Systems uploaded a new video showing their Flame Trainer virtual reality training platform. The system incorporates a custom breathing mask, heat suit and hose to train firefighters for a range of scenarios. I wonder if this kind of physical training, especially for uncommon situations, gives an advantage over just reading about what to do. Facebook's Reality Labs have been doing some very interesting work lately. Recently, Douglas Landman, the director of Display Systems Research, gave a presentation where he detailed a new technique for headsets which uses folded optics and an electronic varifocal module which has no moving parts. This allows for on-the-fly focusing and zooming directly in the headset. In other research news, a patent application that Valve submitted a while back was officially published the other day. It details a wireless VR system which outside of regular head and controller tracking also streams video in real time with electrically steerable antennas. I wonder if this sort of thing will be another step in making headsets smaller and lighter, basically turning them into low latency transceivers and offloading the computing to external devices. More wireless related news, the FCC recently granted authorization for Wibotic to start using their 300 watt wireless charging system. What's interesting here is that this system can both charge robots and drones, allowing for further automation. Imagine electric cars having this feature built in, where in order to charge you simply park in a certain spot. Industrial robot manufacturer Omron unveiled their new HD1500 mobile robot that can lift and transport heavy payloads up to 1500 kilograms. This machine is designed to work alongside humans and is smart enough to sense its surroundings and reroute as things change. Researchers at Columbia Engineering have shown off a prototype for a multi-material SLS 3D printer. Unlike regular SLS or selective laser sintering printers, this one has a laser at the bottom pointing upwards and a glass print bed allowing users to view prints as they progress, but also to potentially use multiple materials in a single print. It's early on in development, but it's an interesting concept. I've mentioned 3D printed builders a few times before in these videos. Well, 3D printed news site Fabaloo recently wrote an article outlining a range of these construction companies and projects all over the world. Well worth a look if you're interested in the topic. The other day, E3D announced a new additive and subtractive manufacturing by laser system, which allows users to automatically switch various tool heads for a single project, meaning they can combine 3D printing and CNC milling to do things like automatically smooth surfaces. Their tool changer and heads are open source and available on Thingiverse and GitHub. In another sign of things to come, the US Marine Corps recently awarded Sarkos Defense with a contract to deliver the alpha version of its Guardian XO powered exoskeleton. This thing looks like it's straight out of the movie Edge of Tomorrow. StoreDot announced what they call the fastest commercial drone charging station, which can wirelessly and autonomously recharge batteries in 5 minutes. This seems like similar technology to the Wibotic system I mentioned earlier, but StoreDot have also developed custom batteries that can charge up to 12 times faster than regular lithium ion batteries. Some more trial flights this week too. First up is the Airbus VSR 700 prototype, which performed its first autonomous flight at a test centre in France. This thing is similar to the camcopter I showed you a few weeks back, with one of its main uses being sea-based surveillance. Another is the Project Aero VTOL vehicle designed by DeFore Aerospace, which completed its first phase of flight testing in Switzerland a couple of weeks ago. YouTube user Grass Jelly uploaded a video the other day of their Champ Mini Quadruped robot. This little thing is open source and based on the larger MIT Cheetah robot. More info is on the project's GitHub page. 
Another little robot recently launched on Kickstarter, the Smarty Presence by Ross Atkin is a little cardboard robot which turns a smartphone into a low cost remote telepresence robot, that's pretty cool. Researchers at UPMC and the University of Pittsburgh have demonstrated how their AI program can detect prostate cancer to almost 98% sensitivity. They did this by first having an expert pathologist train the program on thousands of tissue slides to tell the difference between a healthy and abnormal sample. Then it was let loose on a separate set of 1600 slides and even flagged some that the medical professionals had passed over. In other news, researchers at Michigan Technological University have developed an open source vision based algorithm that monitors 3D prints as they're printed. It uses a single camera and basically superimposes the 3D STL file over the print, comparing and looking for any errors. At the moment, it can auto pause and stop prints if it sees something going wrong, but in the future, they want to integrate it further with the printers, allowing them to spot and auto correct common errors like under and over extrusion in real time. You know I've got a soft spot for functional 3D prints. Well, I saw this the other day and thought it was a great idea. Thingiverse user Aptimex has created a custom slide switch for electronics using 3D printing and a paperclip. A full how-to guide is on Instructables. Another cool open source 3D printing project that caught my eye was by YouTuber Let's Print, where he designed and tested a range of water pump turbines to see what shapes are the most efficient. I love watching people experiment and incrementally push this kind of thing forward. I also saw this PCB stencil printer, which seems like a very handy tool for aligning stencils, allowing you to accurately apply solder paste to lots of circuit boards. There's a guide and files to create your own on the Dengler Mechatronic site. Anthony Kamu, a final year industrial design student at Loughborough University has designed the Thea, a handheld device which helps visually impaired people navigate, much like a guide dog would. The Thea is voice activated, can automatically plot routes and uses a force feedback system and sensors to steer the user in the correct direction. Alright, that's it for this week. Something else I've been wanting to change up is the thumbnail for the Cyberdump series. I think I'm over the toilet phase and want to do something else. I was thinking maybe a futuristic dump truck dumping out robots, drones, etc. Anyways, I know some of you are 3D designers and animators. If you want to help me make a little intro animation in the same isometric line art style as the other content, get in touch. Let me know how much it would cost for like a 10 second animation and put Cyberdunk intro in the subject line. Another thing I wanted to ask you all about was channel memberships. I got a notification recently that this YouTube channel was now eligible for them and I wondered what you thought about me turning them on. Any extra support would definitely be helpful and allow me to concentrate on making more projects and working through the mountain of ideas that I've got. I'm not sure what perks I could offer, but I'll think about it. Obviously, you don't have to. Everything I'll make will always be free, but let me know what you think. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you in the next video.